Hi, I'm Sam and I'm an Osprey ambassador for Rutland Ospreys. Today I'm interviewing Rob Sarney, who is Rutland Radio's breakfast show presenter. So hi Rob, and thank you for agreeing to be interviewed by me today. It's a pleasure, Sam. Thanks very much for coming to my home, which is, um, well, this, this is my home from six o'clock in the morning every day. Cool. The bird fair is 30 years old this year. How many years have you been coming to it and what is your favourite part? I'm just, I would think I've been coming to it for 19 years because Rutland Radio started in December 98 so we've basically covered 19 bird fairs. My, my favourite part really is just when you first step through the doors and you just see so many people there and you think there's all these people from all these countries that have come to our little county uh, to enjoy what we have on offer and it just takes my breath away every time. And there are just so many people who are who are like like you, kind of interested in birds and wildlife, so you can like talk easily to them. Yeah, I think so. I really do. And everyone who we speak to says the same thing that it's uh, an event. It's the best event in the world for wildlife lovers, and the fact that um, everyone has that shared love of nature, and they're all willing to share it as well. As you say, they all want to pass on their knowledge and their experience. Yeah. I mean, do you have a love of nature? And if so, what is your favourite animal and why? I do. I do love nature. Um, Where I live, we um, have um, nest boxes, we have a bird feeder, and we also have a cat. Now, you wouldn't have thought Mm. that was the greatest combination, but the cat just likes watching, and he, he likes watching the birds as much as we do. He doesn't tend to actually go up and try and catch them. So it, it's quite nice, really, to just see animals interacting together. As for what bird is which, I am really bad at identifying them. I see red kites over um, uh, over the back of our garden. Um, I, I know what a blackbird is. I know what a dove and a pigeon are. Um, and I'm learning about like goldfinches and things like that, but I've got a lot to learn. I could cheat at you. Yeah, I bet you could actually. I bet you could. I bet you know an awful lot more than I do. <laughs> I mean, I've learned it all from Rutland Osprey, so I'm quite happy in how much I know. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that'd be great. So, are there any animals you hate or are scared of? <sighs> now, I have a bit of. <laughs> Should I really say this? I'm a real animal lover. I love all animals. Whatever it is, I want to touch it. I want to stroke it. I want to find out it's okay. I'm a bit like that. So that can be everything from, you know, an elephant or a dog or a cat um, down to uh, a bird. We went on holiday to Norfolk and there was an owl being demonstrated. And I so wanted that owl to be resting on on my hand. But, you know, that wasn't going to happen. As far as animals that I find difficult to deal with. Wasps, although I've learnt in the last few weeks they're really important for our ecosystem, but I do find them really annoying. Um, Badgers. Now, I have a real difficulty with badgers because, um, how can I put it, a badger cost me £500. That's, That's why I don't really like badgers. Unfortunately, Um, A badger stepped out whilst I was driving my car quite late at night. Um, The badger sadly didn't make it, and my car just about made it home. So I do have a bit of a thing about badgers, but I I really want to go on a badger watch at Rutland Water just to see what they're really like and, you know, how they operate, because my, my only meeting with a badger didn't go well. I mean, so many animals are like made out to be something they aren't so like wasps they're made out to be like lethal stingers which will sting at any chance that they're given but they won't they'll only really sting if they're threatened or their nest is threatened yeah no i understand what you mean and i do think bees get the raw deal that if they do mm. have to sting you or they feel that that sort of backed into a corner then the fact that they don't survive after their their sting is is embedded in you and wasps can sting fly off and sting again i find that kind of unfair but as i say i am noticing that wasps and finding out that the wasps actually are quite essential to the way that nature works yeah so how important do you think it is to have ospreys at rutland water and the surrounding area i think it's the most amazing thing the fact that ospreys were introduced into rutland 
over 20 years ago that they draw tourists right from around the country, right from around the world to here, that people know Ospreys as much as they know Rutland now, and I think it's an amazing project. Yeah. What animal would you bring, bring back from extinction if you were given the chance? Oh. I think probably a dodo, just because it's the most famous animal that's extinct. I think dinosaurs would just be just a little bit big for us these days, and, and they'd, just, they'd be as tall as this... You'd have a massive oak tree, and then you'd have a dinosaur next to it. And I just don't know whether we we can quite adapt so easily if, if dinosaurs came back. But dodo, you know, a bird of that size is more manageable. So I think I'd go for that. In earlier interviews, I also said dodo, mainly mm -hmm. because scientists are arguing so much on what they look like, what they ate, and what their bones were actually like. Um, so it would be nice to have some in the world so we could finally know what they actually look like. So you could prove it, yeah, I get that. So I go with that too. So bring back the dodo, I think. Yeah. What do you think is the most vital issue regarding conservation in the world today that we need to change? Plastic. Definitely plastic. It's kind of shocking, isn't it? Because we just use plastic all the time. I've been talking about it on my show. I've talked about recycling as well. But I suppose the thing we really need to stop doing is just using as much in the first place. And... The amount of people, people of your age, um, right the way up, up to to people who are much older, who watch David Attenborough and the Blue Planet programme and the whole awareness of plastic, I think as a world we feel really guilty about all the plastic that we use, but I don't think we quite know what to do about it yet. Yeah, I mean, Blue Planet 2 has quite touching images of, like, the turtle that was trapped in plastic netting. And then there was the seahorse wrapped with its tail wrapped around the straw. So the the thing we most need to change is probably straws because they're really bad for the environment. And we tried to change plastic bags, didn't we? But then everyone now has this big collection of reusable plastic bags instead of disposable plastic bags. But either way, they don't biodegrade. Mm. Um, there was... You might not remember, but uh, um, about 10 years ago or so, they used to have bags that were biodegrade, um, and they seem to stop using those, so I don't quite know why. But either way, yeah, we need to get tough on plastic. Yes, I agree on that. So that's it for this interview. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you very much, Sam. <laughs>